is getting close to Christmas, and I'm not preaching a Christmas sermon. <laughs> uh, if you remember last week, I, I preached on uh, the power of God to deal with whatever's in nature and in spiritual power. Uh, he was able to uh, command a immediate reaction to both of them. Today I'm preaching from the book of Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke is a, an extraordinary book. It is full of compassion. It's about women, which the other three gospels don't, don't have. And it is a really, really deep book about the Lord and His work. There's uh, several miracles in the book of Luke that are not mentioned anywhere else. The word Savior is not used in any of the other three Gospels. The word grace is not used in many of the other Gospels. And so today we're going to preach <clears throat> about the prodigal son. And uh, we're going to start in the, let's see, the 11th verse. And then he said a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, For Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided uh, to them his livelihood. And not so many days after, the younger son gathered all together journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to the, a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. <clears throat> And he would have gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. And when he came to himself, he said, <clears throat> How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? And I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, <clears throat> Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to the Father, and when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and run and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to the father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to him, his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hands and sandals on his feet. <clears throat> I don't know about you, Maybe some of you didn't. I hope you didn't. But if you did, here is a time of reflection on what happened in this passage to us today. It's not any different today than it was then. How we have disagreements with our Father. And we just can't wait to get away. And so this son, he is really itching to get away from the father. I'm sure they had some arguments about work to be done and uh, how to live in the father's house. And the son didn't like it at all. And so he says, hmm, I wonder if I would go to him and ask uh, my father for my possessions that I will get, I will." Uh, receive, I wonder if he'd do that. 
And so he's thinking in his mind, and so <clears throat> he goes to the Father and beseeches him to give him what is to become his own property. And it wasn't too unusual in that particular time to do this. <clears throat> and so the Father said, yeah, I'll, I'll split this up between you and your brother. And so he, he did. <clears throat> And the son can't wait to get out of the father's presence so he can do whatever he wants to do. And so he gets his possessions and he goes into a far country. Now isn't that just like us? When we, when we leave our father and mother, we want to get out of their sight so we don't have to answer to our Father. Amen? And so that's what this boy does. He gets way out of sight where he can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. Well, you know what happened. After he was there for a while, he ran out of money. And it's funny, isn't it, how friends will leave you in a split second when you run out of money. Because I can just see all of his friends gathering around him and spending his money and, and encourage him, encouraging him to, to spend the money on the different things in life that he thought that he deserved. And so <laughs> when it come down to the, to the cutting, down to the quick, the friends all left. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever got down to the quick and your friends left you, whether it was about money or uh, uh, whatever you might uh, wish to recall, uh, your friends just left you. No more friends, no place to turn to, no place to go, and you're out on your own without any means for support. Amen? Amen? I don't know how many times I've seen this. It's happened in my own life. Now, Dad and I never uh, had any great big arguments. I just had to get away. I had to be on my own. And after a while, the money ran out. My wife and I can, can attest to that. How we, uh, <laughs> we got out to Tucson, Arizona, didn't have a that gum thing to to call upon and we had to take whatever came along. Now that may not apply to you or it may apply to you. And when you come to your senses and you say, boy, I got to go back to daddy. It's the only place I got to go. And so this young man He's feeding swine, which is an anathema to, uh, that wasn't right, anathema <laughs> to a Jew in that day to feed swine. And he's at the very lowest of low. You can't get any lower than that. To feed swine with uh, different uh, feed uh, that they need and you can't even eat it. Nobody's going to give him anything, it says. And he's not able to feed on the, uh, the stuff that he's feeding the swine. And uh, when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's servants have bread and to spare? I don't have a thing that I can call my own. And he said, I must go back to my father. and tell him, I've sinned against him, I've sinned against heaven, would you take me back and let me be a servant? Now, we could go into a long spiel about being a servant in God's kingdom, but I don't have time for that, so I won't. But, it's always good 
to be thinking of yourself as a servant in God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. And so he says, I'll be a servant, Father, if you'll just let me come back. And so he says, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. I don't know about you, uh, but I thought many times, I'm not worthy to be called Roy Ivey's son. Because my dad was a, uh, a uh, deacon in the church, a, a, a good, good man. Heard, I've never heard anybody say anything uh, bad about my father. And I thought all the time they were saying bad things about me. They weren't, but I thought they were. And so I realized that to be called Roy Ivey's son was a pick-me-up to what I had become. Now, I never did drink or never did do drugs or anything like that. I just was out of money. I didn't have any place to go. And so I went back to my father. And the Bible says that when the father never quit looking for his son, he's always looking for his son to come back. And when he saw him coming down the road from a long distance, the Bible says he saw him and had compassion and ran and fell upon the son's neck and kissed him. Now if you want to find out what God is like, just look at Jesus. He shows us what God is like in heaven here on earth. Because God and Jesus are one. They're the same. Amen? Amen? Amen. They are the same. So how Jesus acted here on earth is the way God acts in heaven. So when we have sinned and come short of the glory of God, when we might finally make up our minds, I can't go any further without you, God. Take your example from this passage. Go to the Father. Seek forgiveness. Acknowledge your sin. And He will run to you with compassion and make things right. Make things right. Amen? Amen. And He will never hold it against you he will never bring it up again. He will always be holding you in the palm of His hand. And there is no one that can take you out of His hand. No one. If you read in the, uh, in, in the Bible says that if any man comes to me by faith, I will accept that man and I will hold him in the palm of my hand and no one can take him out of my hand. So you don't have to be afraid. I don't care what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. Or anyone else that you know, what they've done. God is looking for that person to come to Him admit their sin and he will come to them he will run to them he will be looking for that person to forgive them of their sin Jesus said I come to seek and to save that which is lost amen, amen. that was his main purpose to come to show us who God is in heaven by his living here on earth and he said to come and seek him 
ask for forgiveness and accept Him by faith because it's by grace we're saved through faith and nothing of ourselves. We can't do anything except to ask for forgiveness, seek that forgiveness, and come to Him by faith and He will run and fall upon your neck and you will be saved. Amen? Amen. Now the Son said to the Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I am no longer worthy to be called your Son. Now, <clears throat> this submission to the Father is so important for us to remember. We must submit to the Father. I can I can't do it on my own. You can't do it on your own. You must come to the Father in submission and repentance knowing that He uh, will accept whatever may come out of your heart, out of your mouth and He will accept that as you, as you repent of that sin. And he, and he said, uh, the father said to the servants, bring out the best robe. And that's what God will do to you, for you. He will put the best robe and put a ring on his hand and sandals, or another translation that says shoes. Now this means <clears throat> authority. The robe, a, the best robe, and the ring which gives him back his name and shoes for his feet signifying the authority was restored back to the son for just asking repentance and, and to be a servant amen? amen that's what we can expect when we come to the Lord God he will put a robe on us he will put a ring on our finger and shoes on our spiritual feet. The Bible says that the, the, the feet of those that carry the gospel are beautiful. Now, I don't know about you, but my feet ain't beautiful. Amen. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to see my feet. But spiritually, our feet can be beautiful. Our authority when we preach the word is without question. The robe that we might have upon our shoulders is a mantle. A mantle given by God to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. And bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Now, when we, when we come to God after we've asked for forgiveness, there is a feast in heaven. Amen? Amen. I mean, there is a feast in heaven. Because it's, it's what the Bible tells us. That heaven rejoices when one, one person, comes to know Christ as Savior. Have you done that today? Have you made Christ your Savior today? Have you been given the robe, the ring, and shoes that He's offering today? I don't care what you've done. You may have, uh, you may have been in prison. I don't know. I don't know any of you say you have. You may have cheated on your income tax. I don't know. Have you? You may have been unfaithful in some way. I don't know that either. It doesn't matter what you've done. When Christ died upon that cross, He died for all our sins. Every one of them, from the, 
very first that I, I said this, I think the last time I was here, from the very first sin Adam and Eve uh, uh, did to the very last one before he comes to uh, to call his church out of this out of this earth. He died for all, not just some sin, but all sin. That's why God couldn't look at him upon that cross. Because God can't look at sin. Father, why have you forsaken me, Jesus says. Can you imagine the anguish that Jesus was suffering upon that cross? He died for all our sins. Every one of them. Some people are depressed. Some people live back in the past for sins they may have committed and it keeps them from doing what God would have them do. Lay that past aside and look upward and forward to Christ. He's our only hope. And I say hope in the strongest sense. Hope, hope, hope that we've got in heaven. Because Christ died so that we could have hope and eternal blessings from His death upon the cross. Amen? Amen. I don't know if you've made that decision in your life or not. But I'm saying to you today, if you haven't made that, that forward step to accept Christ as your Savior, now's the day to do it. Jesus said that today is the day, or the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I pray that you make that decision today. And they've got some material over here on this table that you can write what your decision might be. It could be that you're uh, that you are, are are already have made that decision, but you've been holding back. You've lived in the past from some sin that maybe you don't think you can lay aside. You, it's just got you. And you just can't get rid of it. But the Bible tells us that old things, listen to me now, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen? Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, all new things have come. That's what... That's what we really need to do is, be, is put on that new person. It's not just some pie in the sky thing. It's real for today and forever if we'll put on that new person. The Holy Spirit will come into your heart and wipe it clean and you become that new person. I hope that I pray that some of you may need to make that decision today. As I said, there's some material over here on this table. You can write down whatever decision that you might have made or that if you need prayer. I know this is a praying place, so they'd be glad to pray with you. I pray that you will take this message to heart. I'm not much of a preacher, but I do the best I can. But the gospel, the gospel is where it all lies. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall have eternal life. Amen? Amen. All right, would you pray with me? Father God, we come to You in heavy hearts today. I pray, Father, that there might be some that need to make a decision that the Holy Spirit would guide them 
to lay down whatever is in the past. That they may come to you knowing that they're not worthy. But that you will greet them. You will see them coming. And you will give them a kiss. And you will give them a robe, a ring, and shoes. I pray, Father, that you would take this message and, and give you honor and give you glory and give you praise. I pray for the, the church that they would find the pastor that they need. I pray, Father, that there would be any here that need to make that decision that you would, by the power of the Holy Spirit, guide them today. For we ask it in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen.